Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100-pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. I know you all are thinking I'm probably on a real shaky course to talk about race, and I've already talked about religion and politics, and so what about race? Let me tell you what happened. This is just amazing to me. There is a gentleman that we had seen in our neighborhood one time, and we had talked to him. We had been to an event where I ran into him. He is a very handsome, nice black or African-American, whichever you want to call him, pastor. Yes, Pastor Haywood. I'm even going to give his name because his church is just down the street from our church, and he has a few whites in his church, but mostly blacks, and we have a few blacks in our church, but mostly whites. Why can't we all just have one big church together? And you know what I have found? It's not because of the color of the skin. A lot of it is because of the culture, the singing, the way the preaching is done, and the style in which you grew up that was comfortable. Even in other churches where it's not a race matter, there are some people that just aren't comfortable when you've grown up in a church where you sit quietly and you pray with your hands folded, or you even get down on your knees, that they feel comfortable in a church where people are up singing and shouting and clapping. And so sometimes it's not the color, but it's the culture. Well, Pastor Haywood said to me, all right, hold under your hats, folks. He said, I'm doing a conference called All Lives Matter. And I said, what? He said, I know my own people are saying that. He said, my friends and my family are all saying, you can't say all lives matter. It's too important to have black lives matter right now in our nation. But he sees through that because he is seeing through the eyes of belief. He's seeing through the eyes of what Christ would say. The scripture says, if you want to find out what the Bible says about all of this, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither. You can go on male nor female. There are a whole lot of similarities you can draw, not black or white. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. I know Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. got that when he said, but it's about your character. And we would even go further, as Pastor Haywood would say, it's not even about your character. It's about whose you are. Do we have the same father? Are we really brothers and sisters? Yes, in Christ we are. And he's going to be on the radio with me this coming week, and I know that he'll get some flack, and I may get some flack too, but does it really matter In the scope of eternity, what is our purpose while we are here on this earth? It's to help other people live a better, more blessed life. And it's also about helping others, as someone did for me once, learn about the real afterlife. Do you really think when God opens heaven to his children, those who have believed in him, do you really think he's going to ask, now what color are you? What denomination were you? No, there aren't any denominations or colors in heaven. That's what our scripture tells us, and it's perfectly clear. And if you think that is wrong, then you better take it up with the author of the book, not me, my friend. So I just want to say that I am honored to have him on this week. I have spoken at his church. I have been there and had a great time singing and clapping. And yeah, it's a little louder, a lot louder than the music I'm used to, as a matter of fact. And it's a lot more active, perhaps. But I love any church. You can take me to the quietest, most simple little church somewhere where not a word is spoken, not a 
peep is heard between the times of the songs sung out of hymn books and the screens, perhaps, or what the pastor says. I have learned to worship, to be content in any church, and it doesn't even have to be a church. I can worship right here in my own home, which I do. My husband and I do every morning, first thing, when we read the Bible and pray together. If you had told us that when we got married, we would have laughed at you. We were party animals. We were eating, drinking, and playing, and having fun. And that's all we wanted to do. But through the years, when the trials and the issues came up, We had to have some place to turn. We couldn't find answers on our own. And there he was all the time. I love that old song, in case you don't know it. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently in line. He was there all the time the time. Yes, he was. And he is. If you're listening to this and you're either upset because you're black and don't want to deal with whites or whites and don't want to deal with blacks, or if you're maybe of a different origin, maybe you're you're Hispanic, or maybe you have an Asian background, God made you that way. He loves you that way. And he wants you to come back that way forever and forever throughout all of eternity. My friend, if you have never trusted in Christ as your Savior, this is your opportunity. Right now, if you can admit that you have fallen in some area in the past, and who can't? The scripture even says we're all sinners. We've all fallen short. But there is an opportunity for every single one of us to try him. He said, come on, try me and see and believe that God so loved the world. He gave his only son that whosoever would believe in him, whosoever would believe in him. Now that includes you. Doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter your background, your age, your height, your social security number, or the area code in which you live. All that matters is is if you say, God, I need you. I have fallen short. I know I have sinned. I need a happy life, a new life, a joyous life. I want the best that you have to offer for me today. And I want to learn about this eternal life. God says at the end of that scripture, you will not perish, but have life everlasting. I know it's hard to believe. I didn't at first either, but I had to try something because I was desperate. I wanted out of this old world. I didn't want to live. I got sick and tired of the partying and the playing and the screaming and the hating, and I couldn't do it anymore. And that's when he said, I've been waiting. I'm standing patiently at the door knocking. And can you hear that still small voice, my friend? I pray that you can. And I pray that right now you will trust him and that you will come as he says, come. And you will say, okay, go ahead, Lord. If you're really Lord, go ahead. Even if you're saying as some have, okay, I'll play the game. I'll fit into this little formula. I admit I'm a sinner. Okay, I admit I need somebody to help me. Okay, if you're real, go ahead. Even if you come with that attitude, if you ask him and you say, come on, Let's see. Believe me, he will never let you down. The world will, he won't. So there will come a day when it won't matter if you're politically incorrect, if you have made racially incorrect moves. It won't matter where you were born. It won't matter. All that will matter, where will you spend eternity? I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking the salt. Thank you, my friends, for being with me today. For God is shining his light on you. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.